Hi, I'm JC Peretz with allstarcharts.com and we provide technical analysis research for investors all over the world, uh, from the biggest banks and hedge funds down to individual investors trading their own portfolios. Uh, you can find me at allstarcharts.com. To me, everything's technology. You know, um, obviously when you look at the technology sector in the United States of America, you're seeing tremendous outperformance. These are some of the biggest companies in the world, Microsoft, Apple. But then when you look at other sectors, it's funny because the technology can be seen in other areas. For example, healthcare. Healthcare has a lot of different sub-industries like pharmaceuticals, like um, uh, managed health, uh, big uh, uh, biotechnology. These are all within the healthcare space. But then you also have medical equipment stocks. And medical equipment stocks are under the healthcare umbrella, but let's be serious. They're tech stocks, right? And when you look at the charts, they look like tech stocks. Google and Facebook, they're not in the technology sector either. They're in the communications index, which is why that index has done so well. So they've really been the drivers uh, for a long time to the point where the US index creators have had to create new indexes to take companies like Google and Facebook and take them out of technology and put them into a new space. So we've just really seen uh, tremendous outperformance out of that space, not just in the US, but around the world. For me, it's technology on a relative basis. You know, people, we, we look back to the 2000 highs in tech uh, before the bubble burst. And when you compare technology to the S&P 500, we are nowhere near those highs. So when you talk about how we've gone too far, too fast, and you know, we're at record levels in technology, maybe in nominal terms, but in, on, on a relative basis, when you compare it to the rest of the market, we're maybe halfway to where we were back in 2000. So if you're asking what could be that driver, what could be that leader to take the Dow up to 40,000 or the S&P to 4,000, I think tech is where we wanna look. I think it's really a function of the way the markets work and momentum, right? The most bullish thing a stock can do is go up, right? So all of these momentum managers and things of that nature, they're going into the stocks that are moving because think about it. If, if, if you're a trader at a hedge fund and you're buying a stock that, and, and it's not moving, it's not going anywhere, or it's not keeping up with its uh, competitors, you're going to get a tap on the shoulder and you're going to get called into the principal's office. And they're going to ask you, why are we paying you so much money? And you're buying the stocks that aren't showing any momentum, right? That, that's not going to fly. So they're looking for stocks showing momentum and stocks showing relative strength. And technology has had both of those. The overweight nature of the way these portfolio managers are allocated assets has been in technology and we just don't see that changing so when the stock market falls technology will come with it but it'll be one of the first ones to recover that's been the trend that we've seen and that hasn't changed yet you know obviously we continue to monitor the data but when you when you really as I say whenever in doubt zoom out uh, when we look at technology and compare it to those former highs in 2000 the fact that we are nowhere near those levels I think has to be constructive, bigger picture, the fact that we still have so much room to go. I think what you really wanna look for is look for stocks showing overbought readings. We use a 14 period relative strength index on RSI. So whether you're looking at a daily chart or a weekly chart, but particularly a weekly chart in this conversation, we wanna see overbought readings above 70 in RSI. We do not wanna see those oversold readings, right? So if you're seeing oversold readings and you're seeing readings below 30 in RSI for tech stocks on a weekly basis, that is the underperformer. That is the area that we want to stay away from. Uh, I think our best bet moving forward is to be owning and buying the stocks and holding on to the ones that are not showing oversold readings uh, that are actually holding above and showing that relative strength. I think we have to just recognize the sheer uh, colossal size of the companies. You know, these are the biggest companies in the world. And you're just not going to see that in the materials sector, where these are like little irrelevant companies with respect to uh, its, its weighting in the S&P 500, right? These are, you know, they're big, we hear a billion here, a billion there, that's a lot of money. But when you compare it to these trillion dollar companies, you know, it is, you know, these companies can go to zero tomorrow and it will have no impact on the S&P 500. Uh, so I think if you're investing in tech, 
I think it's important to understand just how big these uh, stocks are, and that could provide a ton of liquidity. It's easy to get in and out of them because there's so much money coming in and out of them. So if you're an institution, obviously this is one of the areas that you have to participate in because you're too big to be in some of these uh, material stocks. So I think just the sheer size of the market capitalization is something that just cannot be ignored. The tech ETFs are really important because we use them as a trading vehicle, right, to express a given thesis. But then, of course, we also use it for information. So uh, you can look at the SMH, which is the Semiconductors ETF. Make sure that you're looking and making sure how it's weighted um, because there's some big components in there for sure. So that's SMH. Then there's the XLK, which is the uh, technology ETF, right? Where Microsoft and, and Apple represent approximately 40% of that entire index, two big components. Um, and then you wanna look at things like, I look at the Dow Jones Internet Index, ticker symbol FDN, uh, which I like it as sort of a derivative of tech because it includes the other internet stocks that are not in the XLK. So I think those are three, you know, when, when I hear tech ETF, those are really the ones that come to mind for sure. If you like a more diversified approach to technology, these ETFs serve as a great vehicle, no question. 